So I have this all to myself. I'm at Embankment to change to go to Lambeth North. Good morning and welcome to day two in London. So my eye is still really swollen but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. Um, so I have put at least a bit of face makeup on and some lipstick today so I'm a bit more presentable than yesterday. Yesterday, I'm so sorry, that was such a mishmash of clips. I was just so tired, I was up really really early to get the train and Lauren and I had been in Liverpool and Manchester earlier and then I'd been straight back to work in between then and this trip so I feel like I've just not recuperated. I ended up, I was so exhausted carrying around the suitcase and stuff. It was such a palaver. And I'm staying out of Brick Lane. It's pleasing leaf piles here. It's so bright. I never thought I'd complain about the sun but it, it makes vlogging really difficult because because my eye is swollen I don't want to put my contact lenses in because I feel like that's just asking to irritate it. I actually noticed, there we go, stop here. I actually noticed that you can see my right eye in the Manchester vlog um, when we're back in the hotel is really bloodshot so I think because I was taking allergy tablets I just didn't notice it while I was away and then when I've been home for the last few days I've not been taking the allergy tablets and it's let it swell up and kind of express itself. So I'm back on the allergy tablets now. So yesterday is a massive improvement on yesterday. But yeah, I still don't want to aggravate it by putting makeup on that area or wearing my contact lenses. So therefore I can't wear sunglasses because I don't have prescription sunglasses at the moment. And it's so, so bright. So this would have been this is usually like my dream weather where it's cold but clear and bright and dry because I love coats, I love winter fashion but I can't see a thing because of the sun. So yeah, yesterday I was just so tired. I got back to my hotel. I'm staying in Brick Lane. I'm staying in the Premier Inn Hub. Lauren and I have stayed there before so I just thought I know it and I'll book it and it's pretty cheap. I think it's like £80 a night or something that I paid. So I kind of, I picked there but it is just that little bit further out in terms of like going off to check in and put your stuff in to then come back out. It's not really that far but like in the mood I was in yesterday I knew what was going to happen. I knew if I went to the hotel and sat down it was going to hit me. So I eventually admitted defeat from carting the suitcase around which was doing my head in. But yeah I got to the hotel about 5 o'clock and my phone was really low in battery so I charged my phone till about 6 o'clock and then I was just like, the wave of tiredness that had taken me, I just ended up going to the nearest Sainsbury's, buying some juice and going to bed. I didn't even have dinner or anything yesterday. Um, so apologies for the not so exciting vlog from yesterday. But today will be, today's pretty action packed. We're booked in to the Imperial, I say we, I, but I'm taking you with me. I'm booked in to the Imperial War Museum in the morning. Um, then I'm going to Selfridges and I've got a ticket for the Selfridges Mark on the Muse, which I'm very excited about. And then I'm seeing the Prince of Egypt. So today is, is a bit more action packed, so it's, it's good. I went to, I was properly asleep for about nine o'clock last night. So I've had a good sleep, I'm feeling refreshed. And yeah, let's go to the museum. The sun is in literally the most unhelpful place, right behind the building. But if you can see, I'm trying to block it. If you can see, this is the building. It's very beautiful and very impressive, even if you are blinded walking up to it. There we go, that's a bit better from this angle. Not quite as symmetrical, but you get the idea. Let's head in.
got my mask on so I don't know if you'll be able to hear me um, but this is just quite interesting because I am going to Dublin in a few weeks and I the 1916 rising is just such a period of history that I am incredibly interested in it was basically kind of I can't remember what the phrase is but like England's problem is Ireland's opportunity kind of thing was taken by the leaders of the 1916 rising when they, they declared the Irish Republic but I suppose like the majority of what I read about from it is from an Irish point of view and I've never really considered it from the English point of view um, so that's Patrick Pierce's handwriting there That's the surrender note that they sent the nurse over with. She was then taken to jail even though she was told she wouldn't be. But yeah, so like reading this, so you're talking about the fact that Germany had sent Ireland ammunition which had been intercepted. And I suppose like it sounds really silly now that I'm thinking about it, but you know, it hadn't really given much thought to the fact that from the British Army's point of view they were taking aid from Germany um, you know so and it says in this report here that at Patrick Pierce's trial um, he stated that he was in communication with Germany and that his object was to defeat England I suppose I see I have a bit more sympathy for the, the English reaction than putting it in that context because I've always kind of thought of I've always known about world war history but I've always kind of thought about that from my Scottish point of view and being part of the UK and then I've thought about the Irish uprising as a sort of separate piece of history and I've maybe never quite put the two together because there was no conscription for Ireland we are very brutally executed and I don't think that was right um, particularly James Connolly who's you can see there is commemoration card. Um, he was wounded and they sent him to the Red Cross Hospital and he knew he was going to be executed and they wrote to the, the doctor who was tending him to say, you know, is the prisoner yet well enough to, to face his execution? And the doctor wrote back and said, in my medical opinion, no man's ever well enough to face his execution. So he couldn't stand, he strapped him to a chair to execute him. Then you get Sean McDermott there as well. So we've got her badges and her lipstick case which is branded with the WBS logo um, and it's presumably got Elizabeth Morgan's famous victory red lipstick created for women in the war service. Imagine being a volunteer and then you have to buy your own uniform or make it out of a specific pattern. I mean really? like. You know, volunteering alone should entitle you to to the uniform at least if it's a requirement of the volunteering. And this is quite an interesting bit, it's just kind of running through all the different ways that women could join up or were forced to join up after a certain point if they were under 30 and unmarried. So a factory worker. Part of the ATS. Land Army, which I think is probably the most instantly recognisable 
one that we sort of see that Women's Land Army poster referenced quite a lot. That one there. I feel like probably because we all know this poster image so well, you always think of the Land Army as being farming essentially. <laughs> Um, but this little plaque here is telling you about Rosemary Thompson, who was a rat catcher. So you should see used to go around and pump gas or poison into the hedgerows and then collect the dead rats the next day. So yeah, I mean I can see how that's an agricultural job to stop them, you know, getting in about crops and stuff, but not what you think of, is it? You've got the WRNS. The Auxiliary Air Force. in which your pay will be two-thirds that of men and the Air Transport Auxiliary. So yeah, this is what I was talking about here. Um, so it says here, unmarried women under 30 had to join the armed forces or work in the land or in industry. And then by 1943, women up to the age of 50 could be mobilised into war work. War work. Gender inequality continued as it always does. So, fabric was in short supply, and the government introduced a utility clothing range based on cheap, simple designs that use less material. So, pockets and lapels were made smaller. Do you think this is where the women's fight for pockets really took off? I'm really enjoying this, but there are loads of skill groups. I feel like as soon as one moves on, another one appears. I'm like, I don't mind vlogging if people are just going to be kind of in the background and they're moving on and you're moving on and whatever. But like, a lot of the kids have got like projects and workbooks with them. Um, so they're kind of in one place for a while and I don't really want to be like, it just feels a bit wrong to be like vlogging with children hanging about in the background. So yeah, I don't know what you're hearing or seeing, but I hope it's, the museum is really, really interesting. Um, I could spend hours here. I'm not sure carrot mixed with sweet to make a drink called Carolade sounds particularly appetising. So this little plaque is telling you about a girl called Hazel Perkin who lived on the Isle of Wight and she said she had lost her skipping rope and some soldiers overheard her and they made her a skipping rope out of parts of a landing craft and there it is there isn't that just like the cutest story they heard this little girl saying she would lost her skipping rope and they made her a new one Okay, I am out of the museum, so the sun has moved, uh, so here's the building, a little more kind of face-on, symmetrical, and it's sort of full. Anyway, that was really good. I don't know what, I'll insert, it was busy, um, and there was lots of children who were very, very loud, um, and I, I don't know how interesting it'll be for people not interested in history. I thought it was absolutely fascinating. I actually only did um, first and second World War galleries. They have more. Um, they have a whole Holocaust section. But I was just like, you know what? Like, I nearly cried at several points during the first two galleries. So I just thought, let's let's not because I will be a sobbing wreck if I do the Holocaust one. I get emotional just thinking about it. I had to have a moment and calm down there, I get, like, like, I think for me history isn't just sort of facts and figures and what happened, it's, it's people, that's the kind of history I'm most interested in, it's, it's, you know, I think that's why history always got me in a way that geography just never did, um, it's really connecting to people and their stories, and I think somebody who's like, to my detriment at points a little too empathetic so like I do these exhibitions and I'm, you know just I get really getting emotional again you know thinking about what these people went through and 
just, yeah, the, the world we might be living in if things had gone differently and, but, but also the reasons behind why things happened the way they did and how people were made to feel and then just, just so much of it is just still an issue now in terms of like, you know, there was a whole bit about this sort of racism, especially in the First World War. I think I vlogged that where they were talking about like when they were driving for recruits um, you know, the, the problems that some people thought might be faced if they recruited black people and showed them fighting against and encouraged the image of them fighting against um, white soldiers, even though these white soldiers were on the other side of this war that they were trying to recruit people to fight in and you know, just uh, yeah and just a lot of it just gets to me in terms of the British Empire and the entitlement of Britain. I say, as a person who, who lives in Britain, is Scottish and that's part of Britain. But yeah, so a lot of it really got to me is what I'm saying, but it was so interesting. You like history. I very, very much recommend it. Um, some of the really interesting bits were like, set up so that you could walk through like a, a house and showed you like the Morrison shelter which is like a cage that people used to sleep in that was designed so that if the house was bombed it fell on top of you and um, like the, the top would, would withstand a house falling in on top of you um, and then like the Anderson shelter and stuff but there's so many trucks going by it and I don't want to keep talking and then you can't hear me but yeah but yeah, those bits were so interesting, but also like the busiest, so I didn't really get to vlog them. Um, but I feel like if you had kids or whatever, they would really like those kind of bits. Um, you know, as I say, there was loads of school groups. Well, I said it inside. Hopefully you could hear me, I don't know. Um, there was loads of school groups, so it was very busy, very noisy. Um, and I don't think there's really a day that you're going to avoid school groups. It's kind of part and parcel, but I would really, really recommend it. Anyway, I am now heading back to Lambeth North. Plan is to go up to Central. Um, I want to go to Don Bookshop. I want to go, there's a Majuri pop up that I want to go to. Um, you know, Julie Brand. And I want to get lunch. Well, breakfast actually, I've not eaten yet. Um, and like, I know this sounds ridiculous coming to London and eating McDonald's, but McDonald's launched their festive menu, so I'm quite keen to try that. But I feel like I should probably go to Leon and have their festive menu, because we don't have a Leon in Glasgow, and we do have McDonald's in Glasgow. So, we'll see where I end up. Heading over sort of central-wise, Majuri, Daunt, get lunch, and then I've got tickets to the Selfridges Market on the Muse, and then it's Prince of Egypt tonight. I will take you along, although my battery is down to two out of three bars, so see how long it lasts for. So let the record show, I did try to go to Leon because I knew it was a more sensible place to go, but I couldn't get a seat, so I ended up in this McDonald's, which if you're looking for a chilled McDonald's, it was really quiet upstairs, and what you can actually do is go in, go straight up the stairs, and then they've got ordering machines upstairs with the table service thing. So I came in and I didn't know that that was there, so I just ordered downstairs and picked it up and took it upstairs. But yeah, you can go in, go straight upstairs, place your order, find a table, sit down. All very civilised. So it's just across from John Lewis on Oxford Street. These are the Oxford Street lights. So you'll see them probably better slightly later on when it's dark, but John Lewis is all covered in twinkly lights. It looks very pretty. So I'm at the Majuri pop-up. It's the heirloom ring that I want to see in real life. So I'm going to see if I can see it. <laughs> so these are the Marleybone High Street lights. So this is a really nice little area. Um, so we've got a Rixol, a Maj, a Marlene Burger, a shop. It's anthropology over there. Obviously not like big shops, but oh, there's the matches shop. I have now achieved level two in the matches loyalty scheme. Very impressed with my achievements. That was sarcastic by the way. We're not impressed with my achievements at all. It's not an achievement, but 
they make it feel like one. What was I saying? Yeah, so it's like a little bit out of the way, just a bit quieter and just some really nice shops, including Daunt Books, which is where I'm going just now. Vlog inside because it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure if you've watched any kind of pretty shops of London videos or anything like that, you will have seen this one already. I have been to Daunt, I bought a book, I bought a tote bag that I absolutely didn't need but I'm glad I have it though because I've got, um, brought my mirror out this morning, that's that big purple thing and it's just, it does fit in this bag but kind of only just and because this bag clasps closed I'm a bit wary of like, like anything that puts too much pressure on it and it kept kind of spraying open on me this morning so I think the, the mirror was a problem so I put it in here and now I'm heading up to Selfridges I don't know if you can tell I've switched to my phone because my camera is basically out of battery which is quite frustrating because I'm sure most of what I took in the War Museum this morning is not actually going to be of great interest to many people so probably won't use a lot of it but it's killed my battery taking it whereas I'm sure like the Christmas market is maybe a slightly more interest and would have been better to film on the camera but such is life So I've come through from like the side, um, like via Christopher's place, and yeah, I'm just getting a look at the the big Pegasus and the Brass Day of Light from a completely different angle to usual. I've never actually thought to walk down the street and see it like that, but it's very impressive like that, isn't it? it and I'm going to head into the I am in Selfridges, there is a pink Christmas tree. I like this from Tech Baker. I feel like I would get a lot of weird out of that. This is very on my street. It's green, it's got a sleeve floral into it. This is gorgeous as well. Let's go have a look at the Christmas shop on foot. Even though I really should be getting to the Christmas market. Bit like this. I'm not usually into kind of place decorations, but I like the, the sort of cut out design of this. And this is quite nice as well. It's quite a sort of pale gold, it's not like a gaudy kind of shade of gold. I love this, it's not the most um, festive, but it's very, very pretty. It's a right Eleanor Stewart, which is the blank side. Corky figures. I love corky. This tree is very traditional. Lots of reds and then deep rich blues and oh look at those bows, I love them. I'll get that and put it in my hair. This one's called the Nutcracker so that makes sense 
obviously. I like the head pieces they've given to the models. Maybe not the most practical thing to wear, but very, very effective. This tree is like the same as the one that was in Selfridges at Manchester with the ribbons. I genuinely just read that as um, Christmas of Dreams with Emily in Paris from a distance and then came up and was like Emily Pugh and I was like, Emily in Paris? What? What even was that show, guys? It was oh, not good. So I am at Selfridges Market on the News. I had to book a ticket to this but absolutely nobody checked it. This is obviously a very quiet one but it was sold out for tonight and basically all of tomorrow and Saturday so today was not really the ideal day for me to come um, but I just kind of came while I could sort of thing. Waffles. Oh, look at the Pink Paladin's book, that's super cute. Then there are hot dogs, gully, ultimate Indian street food, coffee and cocktails. I had like made a point of eating my lunch so that I would be hungry. I'm not particularly hungry but I might still get something sweet. So there is the Calvary Canteen, that would be where I was planning to get dinner from. But as I say, I'm not in the mood for dinner yet. But there are hot donuts and marshmallow club here. Chin chin ice cream. Utter waffle. I enjoy the name. We've got Avalon Venezuelan food. Burgers and fries. Beaver time. Got this beautiful Joe Malone tree. I kind of thought there would be more to do. It's just it's mainly just sort of food and drink places. The Penhaligon stall has games, which is I think why it's basically the really busy stall. And we've got Hilter Skelter. So this is the menu for the hot donuts and marshmallow fluff stall. So they have got white chocolate kinder and Oreo s'mores, which is two deep fried Oreo filled hot donut bites, rolled in sugar, white chocolate hazelnut sauce, torch, torch marshmallow fluff, and a cookie crumb. Then we've got molten camembert and cranberry, which is two molten camembert filled savoury hot donut bites, served with a pot of cranberry jelly and drizzled with glutamine garlic butter and onion crumb. And then apple pie and sea salt honey butter, two deep fried apple pie filled hot donut bites, rolled in spiced sugar, served with a sea salt honey butter dip. And the lights are super cute. And Halligan's stand is still busy. Oh, guys, look now that it's dark. So that's the lights. You can see the lights in the trees. These are the lights in the front of Selfridges. Oh, I feel so festive. I feel like this is just like a little festive postcard right now. So I am back at John Lewis where I was earlier and the lights are like changing so can you see at the moment they're like presents with bows at the top. Then they're like cascading down from the top in the different colours. They, they all become white eventually so then they're changing to white and the Christmas wow. trees are coming out and spinning oh, that's a bit better stars are coming through now
come to you. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's back. It goes back to the piles of presents. I think that's really cool. I'm very impressed with that. Just the Selfridges um, still don't seem to have Gucci Beauty. They don't have the completed work stuff. Um, the Guerlain stuff was kind of hard to get at and I really couldn't be bothered uh, making a mess of my hands. So I still get Harrods. I think I'm more of a Harrods person than a Selfridges person anyway. So go to Harrods tomorrow. They don't stock completed works but uh, Brown Thomas stock completed works. So when I get to um, I'm going to get to Belgium. I don't know where I think I'm going. When I get to Dublin, um, I'll be able to see the completed work stuff in person there. So, and I'm probably not buying it anytime soon, but I just wanted to see it in person to judge it. Um, so, yeah, basically, I have left Selfridges and I am going to walk down towards the theatre for the Prince of Egypt. There's a few people on Regent Street now, which I feel like must be fair than you. I feel like this movie used to be J Street. Could be making that up. So I'm going to go in here and have a look because I quite enjoy their hair accessories generally. I like this. There's a few people over at Covent Garden as well, so it's not like it's new to London as a shop. I feel like this actual shop is new. And there's kind of the same dress but in lighter pink hair colours, but to prepare the burgundy. It's quite heavy. That's the only thing I'll say, like it's heavy without having anything in it. Well I suppose there is a security tag, but like it is quite a weighty thing to carry. But I do very much enjoy it and it's only 30 pounds so it's you know, it's not going to break the bank. Very interested. Guys, it's time! I am so excited for this. It's been so long since I saw like a kind of big full-on musical. Um, I've been doing a lot of like stage shows, like just like plays. And I've been to see Six a few times, which is obviously quite a small cast and whatever. I feel like I haven't seen just like a traditional musical theatre show in so long. I am so excited. Prince of Egypt last night was amazing. If you get a chance to see it, please go see it. You know, the choreography, the songs, like the singing, it was just amazing. So it's only on until the 8th of January, so it's a really short run. If you are in London or if you're near London and you can get to see it before then, I would so highly recommend it. It was phenomenal to the point that I am going again tonight. I bought rush tickets this morning so that's how good it was. Um, but yeah I'm going to love and leave you with part one of my London vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in part two.